in this video the big topic uh, scaffolding safety the main objectives are uh, to give a better awareness and understanding of the regulations concerning the suitability of materials used to construction scaffolds um, the manner in which this material should be erected to form the more common type of scaffolds um, the correct construction of uh, boarded out platforms um, handrails and ladder access are uh, common to all scaffolds uh, that is a main objective of in this video hazards um, generally hazard is a potential condition now um, awaiting to be converted into an uh, unwanted event or accident um, or anything with potential uh, that cause harm is called um, hazard in this uh, scaffold area see the picture employees working on scaffolds are exposed to these hazards um, falls from elevation uh, caused by slipping unsafe access the lack of fall protection and bad blocking and then second one uh, struck by falling tools or debris um, and third one is on uh, electrocution from overhead power lines um, and fourth one is on scaffold collapse um, caused by instability or overloading and the uh, fall hazards um, may occur uh, see the picture um, in this workman not wearing the full body harness at the same time edge area um, no protection like no handrails um, and outrigger not fixed properly and ladder also missing okay need on um, when scaffold flumps or planks fail um, while ascending or descending in a ladder that is very important um, everything is worst condition um. next one uh, what is scaffold scaffold a temporary elevated working platform with a supporting structure um, which is used to support man machine and material is called uh, scaffolding there are um, three types of uh, scaffolding uh, one is on uh, supported scaffolding and second one is on suspended uh, scaffolding and third one is on mobile scaffolding supported scaffolding is on uh, welded frame wood pole um, dupe and coupler and bamboo and uh, suspended scaffolding is on uh, single point uh, suspended scaffolding multiple points um, suspended scaffolding and third one is on uh, floats and floating cranes um, and fourth one is on boards and van chair and the uh, mobile scaffolding generally we know everyone um, and the uh, main hazards and uh, preventive action in uh, scaffolding um, uh, most of the time um, uh, we will find out that um, fall from elevation um, bad blocking scaffold collapse um, getting struck by falling tools and debris um, electrocution so it's a general hazard for a uh, scaffolding work activities um. your preventive action uh, first one um, competent scaffold erector um, and second a uh, strong scaffold material with good blanking um, use of scaffolding tack green yellow red color um, and proper handrail midrail tow guard um, use of full body harness um, good arrangement of ladder um, use of safety net um, below the working surface um, barricading around the scaffolding work um, scaffolding should not touch the overhead lines um, proper insulated electric tools to be used um, work to be done under proper supervision these all the things are needed at um, scaffold erection time this is a preventive action uh, before erect the scaffold we need to ensure that uh, workplace area is a common action sum um, and the main things height work area is on a fall man and fall of machine and material dizziness uh, fear from height um, collapse of scaffold um, ladder full body harness and lifeline failure also this also height work area hazards um. scaffold uh, it can also be used to support materials or equipment um. yes scaffold is a safe working platform for workers and uh, next term types of uh, scaffold uh, in this uh, area we are discussing stationary scaffold scaffolding consisting of uh, two rows or more of standards connected together longitudinally with ledges and braces um, and transversely with uh, transoms or bootlocks um. stationary scaffolds can uh, be built up as um, high as the job requirements uh, dictate um. 
the vertical members um, must be kept um, plump and uh, straight to avoid uh, eccentric loading and uh, possible collapse. Um, rigid bracing, uh, usually a combination of uh, horizontal and uh, diagonal bracing, um, is required to prevent uh, swaying and uh, displacement. Um, the booting or anchorage for scaffolds uh, must be sound, um, rigid and uh, capable of carrying the maximum intended load without uh, settlement or displacement. Um, that is very important. Um, in the next one, um, see the picture. A mobile scaffold uh, usually has some um, four standards, uh, one at each corner. Um, this can be placed on the ground uh, and wheels uh, like uh, casters um, are used uh, so that the scaffold can be moved. Um, mobile scaffolds are similar to stationary scaffolds um, except that they are wheel mounted. Um, the maximum height of a mobile scaffold uh, must not exceed um, four times the smallest dimension of its face area. And in this area, outrigger is a very, very important one. And the next one, mobile stationary towers. Indoor, the stationary tower 4.0 times the smallest base dimension. And the mobile tower is on 3.5 times the smallest base dimension. Outdoor is on stationary tower is on 3.5 times the smallest base dimension. Mobile tower is on 3 times the smallest base dimension. Generally, smallest base dimension, it refers to the shorter side of the scaffold, rectangular face of the scaffold. In the rectangular face scaffold phase, there are two dimension length and width the smaller base dimension is the shorter of two sides. 3.5 times the smaller dimension, this means the height of the scaffold tower is 3.5 times the length or width of the smallest dimension. In other works, if you take the smaller side of the scaffolds, rectangular phase and the multiply it by 3.5, you will get the height of the scaffold tower. For example, you are using a 2 meter scaffold. Okay, If the smaller dimension of the scaffold is 2 meters, then the height of the scaffold is on the tower should be 2 into 3.5. That means 7 meters. This is on smallest base dimensions. And the next one, independent scaffold. The scaffold is erected independent from the building, but it is tied to it at a suitable intervals. The inner row should be set as some close as is practicable to the building. A face blade is provided for each row of standards. For independent scaffolding, the scaffold structure does not rely on the building for support, but it is tied for security purposes. For dependent on scaffolding, the structure is fully dependent on the building for its support. And the next one, indoor mobile scaffold. Uh, indoor mobile scaffold, uh, this mobile system scaffold was erected uh, and needing uh, racks to add uh, stability. See the picture. Um, in this picture, um, uh, caster also used. Um, that means um, we need to provide an uh, outrigger. That means um, above 2 meter height work area at the same time um, wheels also attached means uh, we need to provide an uh, outrigger. This is uh, a common requirements. Um, and uh, next term. Um, that is on 1 is to 1 meter, okay. 1 meter, 1 meter um, bay wise, uh, we need to calculate the safe walking load. Um. And uh, see the picture here uh, that all parts name also mentioned like uh, lift height, um, bay width, um, bay length also mentioned um, and transoms, um, base brace longitudinal also mentioning base plate, um, sole board, um, face lift or um, kicker lift, um, ledge, um, toe board, um, mid rail, quad rail. Um, Put lock uh, top working platform. This is on general parts of uh, this scaffold. For assumption wise, uh, in high rise building area, uh, we need to uh, check uh, the design calculation. Uh, for assumption wise, uh, first one, um, the total self load uh, never come to the base plate uh, due to restrained uh, provided at uh, each floor level. So, 50% of the uh, self load is uh, considered. Um, and second one, um, at each floor level load distribution is um, through the tying by um, horizontal um, 
refer the pictures um, and third one is on um, the scaffolding base are um, particularly or partially like uh, the scaffolding base are um, partially continuous in nature and the uh, fourth one is on um, for simplification in uh, design uh, it is assumed um, this is a um, plain structure uh, with pin joint at a uh, one meter on a um, safer side um, and generally the uh, dead load calculation uh, uh, from IS 875 um, 1987 uh, part 1 uh, 500 and newton per meter squared um, this is a uh, general uh, dead load calculation uh, format um, your main recommendations um, verticals um, shall be on plane um, compacted um, leveled ground um, and the second one uh, all pin joints um, shall not be loose um, and third one is on uh, sufficiency of uh, jack with inside fixing arrangement details um, and fourth one is on safety of um, connections uh, inside the building area that is very important um, and the next point um, scaffold couplers um, sometimes we call the scaffold fittings um, these have been designed um, and tested to BS 5973 BS is on uh, pretty some um, standard specifications um, and the next one um, because some of them is load bearing components um, most fitting achieve um, safe working load um, and the types of couplers um, one base plate um, and second uh, right angle coupler um, and third one is on putlock coupler um, and fourth one is on swivel coupler fifth one is on spike cord coupler and sixth is on sleeve coupler and seventh is on gridder coupler and seventh wheel these are all things are mandatory points the base plate two category of base plate picture showing here this is the metal plate first one with a pack in the middle used under the standards used for distributing and spreading the load from the standard to the scaffold foundations um, and the second one um, in some cases a screw jack is attached to maintain the leveling of the platform if it is erected in unleveled ground most of the time means uh, like um, the staircase area floor edge area we will uh, use uh, this uh, screw jack um, that is very important um, in uh, scaffold erection time and the next one um, right angle coupler um, yeah, right angle couplers are also known as a double coupler. See the picture. Two different varieties of picture is there. And it is used to connect ledges to the standards. They have been designed and tested to achieve a right angle connection with a maximum safe working load of 630 kgs. Putlock coupler, it is also called clips and single clamp. See the pictures clearly attached in this uh, slide area and used it is used to connect them transoms to the ledgers uh, these fittings are only suitable for um, light duty use only this put lock um, coupler is not a load bearing fitting purposes that is a notable point um, and the next one um, swivel coupler swivel couplers are used to connect them um, to tubes um, at any angle through 360 degrees um, normally used to connect the bracing to the scaffold the swivel coupler should never be used as a right angle coupler the fitting is a load bearing coupler with a safe working load of 550 kgs and the next one spike cut coupler also known as a joint pin this fitting is used to connect them to tubes together in longitudinal and in vertical position this fitting is placed inside the two ends of the tubes this fittings should never be used in positions where it will be subject to bending or tension see the picture that clearly mentioned the next one sleeve coupler sleeve coupler also it has a safe working tension load of 315 kgs only the sleeve coupler is used in the same way as the spike cut coupler but this time used on the outside of the tube this fitting has a resistance of uh, to bending at least equal to any tube the next one uh, gridder coupler gridder coupler it has a safe working tension load of 350 kgs uh, if used in pairs 
Grider coupler or commonly known as a beam clamp. This coupler is used to connect the scaffolding pipe into the beam area. This fitting should always be used in pairs to prevent a movement area. And the next wheels technically called caster. Casters are used on towers allowing them to be moved. And casters have two locking systems. One to connect the wheel to the standard and want to lock the wheel in place to stop it moving. See the picture that clearly arrow mark mentioned two different type of connections. And next foundation very very important in the scaffold erection time. First we need to check the soil or ground beneath the sole board should be well compacted and free from irregularities which could make the sole board unstable or poorly bettered and second one on slopes exceeding 1 is to 10 ratio a check may have to be made on the foundations to ensure the stability of the scaffold. The ground must be capable of supporting the scaffold and the next one the sole boards must be capable of spreading the weight of the structure without a disaster. And the next one, two standards per sole board are better than one. And the next one, the sole boards should be placed at right angles to the building and should not project too far out beyond the scaffold. Sole boards should not be undermined. And see the sample pictures, sample pictures like proper erections foundation in trench area scaffold erection means we need to follow this type of foundations this diagram shows how the scaffold foundation should be corrected note that the cross braces have been ordered to transfer loading away from the base of those standards which are near the trench area see that picture in a trench at the same time the base plate and the transom position also mentioned and the next one, the bad practice of foundations, um, this one worst condition, it will lead to that uh, person falling at the same time scaffold collapse also chances there. We need to clearly ensure the workplace area. Before erecting the scaffold, um, we need to check um, and uh, comply all the points. Um. Next one, uh, standard. Um, a vertical or near vertical tube you based on the ground or a structure. Um, used to carry the ledgers um, scaffold use um, standard spacing um, in the uh, british standard spacing meters um, davo materials um, very light duty scaffold is on uh, 2.7 to 2.2 meter variation is the standard spacing um, light duty scaffold means um, 2.4 to 2.0 standard spacing variation is the at the same time uh, general purpose scaffold is the uh, a scaffold area 2.1 to 1.8 meter variation is the heavy duty scaffold area 2.0 to 1.6 standard variation is the see the sample picture of standards that red color round mark is on standard pipes this area any crack any damage is there any painted we can't use if rusted means don't use and don't allow to erect at the workplace area is very important to pre-checking for scaffold and the next point ledgers a longitudinal tube fixed barrel to the face of the building it also act as some support for the transoms it can also be used to form for top them ties in the scaffold see the picture that round color red color mark mentioned that is on ledger we need to ensure at a workplace area same transoms and uh, a tube uh, spanning um, across the two ledges to form um, support for the boards. Um, it is sometimes called as the board bearers. Um, maximum spacing between um, each transoms is on um, 1.5 meters um, when a yeah, 38 mm board is used. Um, a yeah, minimum of uh, 4 transoms uh, to a yeah, 3.9 meter board area. And the sample picture. Uh, the main transoms at the same time intermediate transoms we need to differentiate which area is on main transoms which one is an intermediate transoms that is on main uh, transoms is on how much uh, with okay that is where we need to calculate like length of the 
transoms that is also we need to calculate and 3.9 meter and this intermediate is on 1.5 meter needed and the next one brace that is on zigzag ledger bracing and grass braces are fixed with a swivel coupler to the standards and alternative methods three variety of braces mentioned a tube blazed diagonally with respect to the vertical or the horizontal members of a scaffold and fixed to them to afford stability. The best angle for setting the brace is 45 degrees. And the working platform that is very important here is on as per British standard 2482 wise and should not be warped, twisted, split or badly worn, painted or otherwise treated um, so as to conceal uh, any defect. Um, that's why I told uh, before uh, we need to ensure at a um, scaffold area at the same time workplace area. Two board wise um, like access only. Three boards wide is done for men without tools. Um, four boards wide for the men with tools. Uh, that is very important. Um, and folded lift, um, the spacing of transoms for the border lift is done, um, limited by the thickness of boards used. Um, and while boards are available which are manufactured to British standard 2482, the majority boards um, used on scaffolding will confirm the NASC technical guidance note DG5 East 91. Scaffold for the specifications. Um, 38 mm boards made to DG5 is to 91 standard should be supported at a um, maximum span of 1.2 meters whereas um, when a British standard board is employed um, a maximum span of 1.5 meters may be used. Um, and the next one um, boarded lift um, maximum spacing for uh, footlocks or transoms um, when using boards um, conforming to British standard uh, 2482. The nominal thickness of board and the maximum span of transoms like uh, one, 1 meter uh, span of transom is on uh, the board thickness is on uh, 32 mm, uh, 1.5 meter means um, 38 mm thickness of board needed um, and 2.6 meter uh, span of transform, transom means um, 50 mm uh, thickness of board needed um, at the same time uh, 3.5 meter means um, 63 millimeter um, thickness of uh, board uh, required at um, workplace area and the next point that important one um, guard rails um, that is on guard rail is on uh, must be provided or not we need to ensure at workplace area where persons are liable, liable to fall 2 meters or more um, at a level at least 910 mm above the level of the platform uh, see the pictures uh, that um, clearly mentioned uh, at the height approximately halfway if it be in the top edge of the toe board um, and the top and subsequent guard rail so that no gap is larger than 470 mm and fixed inside the standards. Generally that top rail height is on 42 inches that is on plus or minus 3 inches acceptable. Mid rail is on 21 inches needed and the toe board is on 3.5 inches needed. See the sample pictures. And then the next term is a clear cut picture the guard rail and mid rail also is very important one one time mom you have to stop the video and focus um, and see the picture and the next one uh, toe board um, toe board uh, is on uh, must be fitted to all scaffold um, to prevent persons and uh, materials falling from the scaffold um, it must be installed in um, all side of the scaffold platform except in access point um, to accompany guard rails um, at least 150 mm high above the platform they are usually made by a scaffold board and on edge area and fixed inside the standards with the use of proper clips that is on 470 mm maximum needed that card rail that is on toe board is on 3.5 inches that is very important 1 inches is on 2.54 centimeter and the next one ladder access ladders used as access to the workplace it should be 
not defective in any way or not painted um, and don't use a defective ladder um, place on the firm footing um, with each style equality supported um, and the next one um, so positioned um, that there is sufficient space um, at each rung to give one adequate uh, foothold um, positioned um, approximately at an angle of 75 degree that is on uh, one measure horizontal to four measures of uh, vertical um, and the next one uh, when more than three meters in length uh, it must be securely tied at the top or a uh, footed area at the bottom to prevent slipping um, extended to a height of one meter five rungs above the working platform uh, that is also we need to consider them um, and the next one uh, positioned uh, so that vertical height of the ladder running between them um, landing does not exceed uh, nine meters um, when moving or placing a ladder be aware of um, overhead power lines uh, and other electrical hazards uh, this is the um, general points of uh, ladder access um, and the placing ladder is on very important um, that is on top area tie of um, and ground level conditions um, that is on the 75 degree angle positioning and uh, top of the area like a platform to that um, ladder edge area up to one meter only applicable at the same time landing platform that is very important um, that is on connections uh, lashing is properly uh, connected or not we need to ensure um, and ladder inspection um, or ladders must be inspected prior to use um, and uh, things to look out for um, check to see if the ladder is damaged um, check the stills or cracks are split um, check the rungs are all in uh, place and the supporting rods are under the rungs um, this is a general requirement um, and access um, a uh, working platform uh, must be provided or not we need to ensure um, where necessary with access holes which must not be more than 500 mm wide um, and as small as practicable in the other directions um, some areas uh, need on uh, proper signages uh, caution signages um, and ladders are um, good condition of ladders are fixed or not we need to ensure um, the tie up conditions um, and the guard rail outriggers um, everything we need to ensure at the workplace area landing must be fitted with the guard rails and the tow boards and no material should be stored like um, platform to that uh, ladder top edge area up to one meter only applicable um, if it is exceeding more than one meter uh, never to allow at a workplace area system scaffold um, that is an common type of a uh, system scaffold um, the most systems are composed of uh, standards with uh, performed connectors um, welded at intervals along their length to which the ledges are fitted with them proprietary uh, clamping or wedging arrangements um, some earlier system used deep um, mat to into the frames um, typically h or x shapes um, to avoid the need of um, bracing um, and a sample picture of a uh, system scaffold ring and um, a couple lock system and a star system and the next uh, system scaffold the sample pictures attached um, uh, like outrigger but in this uh, place area um, the person not worn the full body harness is a worst condition um, definitely person falling chances there um, it's uh, not good for one um. and uh, next um, scaffold inspection um, scaffolding platform must be inspected um, by competent um, inspector um, scaffolding inspector before being used for the first time um, after any substantial addition dismantling or other alterations um, after any event likely to have affected its length strength or the stability at regular intervals not exceeding seven days since the last inspection um, using scaffolding checklist and must have report of inspections um, handing over certificate has be given to the requesters um, and uh, scaffold chart um, uh, short checklist um, like uh, main points uh, footings um, uh, standards um, uh, ledges uh, bracing uh, bootlocks and transoms uh, couplings uh, bridles um, ties uh, boarding guard rails and uh, tow boards uh, ladders um, generally we need to check uh, this uh, 11 points um, and the main thing the footing is very important um, not only for the footing each and every points um, and uh, main point and the uh, sub key points also mentioned uh, we need to ensure all other points also and uh, inspection report um, that is on uh, the construction uh, regulation regulation 1996 regulation 30 wise um, 
inspection carry out on the behalf that is on who is carried out that is on certified inspector or not we need to ensure them and the date and the time of inspection is very important and the second column is on description of place of work and the part inspected that is on which area and then which part you are inspected like a grid column 1 column 2 column 3 area means we need to ensure this uh, second one and third is on uh, details of any matter identified giving rise to the health and uh, safety of any person um, that is also need to mention them um, fourth one is on um, any action taken um, we are find out uh, any observation means um, here action taken or not we need to mention uh, finally any additional information also we need to mention them um, in this uh, fifth column area and the next handing over certificate it's very important one to the requester team area and the next scaffold tacking system the scaffolding inspector shall place a weather proof plasticated or equivalent color code labels at each access point at the boundary of each scaffold section from the initial erection stage until final dismantling which shall clearly state if the scaffold is ready for use or not to be used in addition the label shall state like a date erected maximum loading of kilo newton per meter square date inspection with a foreman name scaffolding supervisor signature everything included in the tacking system scaffolding tacking system is on red tack scaffold tack means that the scaffold platform is unsafe and must not be used by anybody except by certified scaffolder and only for the purpose of rectifying or dismantling scaffolding tacking system is an yellow tack it is on when this scaffold tack is showing it means that the scaffold is under inspection it is recommended that the scaffold should not be used uh, when this um, tack is posted um, and the next one uh, green one is a um, very important um, when this scaffold is shown it means that the scaffold is um, safe to use um, and the fall protection um, uh, personal fall protection system um, a system used to arrest an employee in um, fall from working levels um, it consists of on uh, anchoring uh, point uh, connectors um, a full body harness um, a shock absorbing lanyard and may include a deceleration device um, lifeline or suitable combination of any of these um, fall protection means not only for that uh, full body harness even though safety net um, high rise building means uh, we need to ensure that external area like uh, fall protection net provided or not um, everything we need to ensure um, that is a big topic um, right now i am mentioning only for that full body harness only above 1.8 meter height means um, the full body harness is very important here is a common fault is on um, substandard scaffolding um, and the next one is on um, common fault like uh, high rise building area is on column reinforcement work um, in this area that is an uh, three plank uh, needed because of uh, the person men and material movement means uh, minimum three planks needed um, but here is an just one plank only provided it is not good for that um, work area is this height um, and uh, always uh, need to ensure the handrail connections like um, top handrail missing um, open planks means uh, need to close the plank um, and the next point is on um, provide a safe access um, to guard of the scaffolding um, close the opening uh, properly provide handrail of the platform that is very important um, and uh, next one um, uh, remove all uh, extended pipes from the access area uh, scaffolding uh, uh, need on handrail also needed uh, possible means provide the base plate um, clamps are um, not fixed um, properly and the next one uh, overhead power cable is there um, so it's very dangerous um, substandard uh, scaffolding also um, that is on very worst condition i think uh, um, even the supervisor also seeing like in this area positive safety culture needed um, proper supervision also needed at the workplace area and uh, top of the area see the picture um, ground and top of the area poor material stacking uh, proper material stacking needed um, and um, remove unwanted materials and properly securely tie up the materials um, and the poor material management also is there um, and uh, see that unwanted material means um, need to remove at um, 
separate places uh, and then the handrail also missing like uh, mid um, down side uh, see the picture uh, handrail missing um, and the clamps also edge protection like uh, any heating changes there um, all areas uh, some um, softener means uh, like any um, pipe connections um, any softener um, uh, it is uh, very good for uh, in this area better remove the boards and uh, unwanted materials at the same time uh, handrail connection is very important um, and the next one summary use appropriate uh, scaffold construction methods um, erect move or alter scaffold properly and the next one um, ensure the stable access um, and use a competent person um, train on uh, scaffold construction and the hazards um, and involved with the scaffold inspect scaffold before each shift and after alterations determine fall protection requirements that is very overall in this video summary mentioned please follow the safety next if the fall won't hurt but the sudden stop will that is very important. Look after yourself. Look after the people around you. Because